This is the Kate Early Show news, views and in-depth interviews coming up for you today after the world's most audacious prison breakout. The El Chapo drug trial gets underway in New York amid high security. A gift of life. We hear firsthand how stem cell donation is making a difference. And first dates, Fred Syriax is here talking posh nosh and politics. All of that coming up. But first, let's take a look at today's top stories for you. Approaching the end game, Theresa May hints a Brexit deal could be imminent. Sky News witnesses the destruction caused by California's most deadly wildfires. And men are from Mars. Now, science proves our brains really do work differently. Very good afternoon. Brexit negotiations with Brussels are now in the end game, according to a buoyant Prime Minister. Her words come amidst growing predictions that after two years and five months of negotiations, a deal could be imminent. Agreement needs to be reached by the end of tomorrow to meet a tight parliamentary timetable. The negotiations for our departure are now in the end game, and we are working extremely hard through the night to make progress on the remaining issues in the withdrawal agreement, which are significant. Both sides want to reach an agreement, but what we are negotiating is immensely difficult, and I do not shy away from that. The Brexit talks are not about me or my personal fortunes. They are about the national interest. And that means making what I believe to be the right choices, not the easy ones. Well, differences with the EU do remain, and leading Brexiteers within Cabinet are continuing to express reservations. But in spite of the tensions and divisions, Cabinet members appeared upbeat on their way into Downing Street for today's Cabinet meeting. Just sat in the street, but I'm confident we'll make progress. What about what you mentioned at Cabinet uh, today? I'll just discuss that with you uh, in, uh, in public. Is there mutiny in the Tory party? Of course not. What advice would you be giving Theresa May? Hello, Mr Brokenshire. Can you get a deal done in time? Well, we're uh, obviously working hard on this final phase of the negotiation, this final stage. I think we should remain positive on getting a good deal for our country and taking our country forward and looking beyond Brexit and getting on with the jobs. Minister, will there be a deal on the table to discuss this morning? We're really working on it. There's a huge amount of effort going on, as you've heard, and uh, I'm confident that we will get a good deal. Yes, thank you very much. And if there's no agreement on the deal by tomorrow, what's plan B? See you later. Thank you. Bye-bye. Straight now to Central Lobby and our Deputy Political Editor, Beth Rigby, who's standing by for us. Um, deal nearly done, Beth? Well, it could be getting there, Kay. I mean, look, where have we been over the past few days? There was meant to be an emergency cabinet meeting potentially on Saturday to sign off an agreement. That slipped to Monday. Uh, they'd hoped to do it today in number 10, but that didn't quite come to pass. And now all eyes on whether or not Theresa May can call an emergency cabinet meeting tomorrow at some point to try and sign off uh, some sort of withdrawal agreement deal, at least in her cabinet, that then she can go to Brussels next week uh, for a summit to try and sign it off. Then she has to come back to Parliament. That's a whole different story. Um, but in terms of the mood music about where we are, uh, it is getting a little bit warmer. I would say that we've moved from people talking about significant obstacles to a small amount of outstanding issues, a sense that maybe they might be progressing and over in Brussels the UK side have been telling my colleagues there that they think uh, things have progressed in the right direction in the last 12 hours. There's more negotiations uh, expected tonight. On Sunday they ran until quarter to three in the morning so they certainly want to try and do a deal. Now the big question is will the Brexiteers in cabinet swallow it? There was another meeting of the, the pizza club if you like. Some of those uh, Brexiteer cabinet ministers, the likes of Penny Mordaunt, Liam Fox, Andrew Leadsom who are very nervous about the issue of this Irish backstop, very nervous uh, that the Prime Minister might be selling them out and in some way putting them in perpetuity into some sort of close relationship with the EU that they can't stomach. Uh, but certainly Brexiteers on the back benches that I've spoken to today feel uh, like this won't be a moment of mass resignations. They feel that the Cabinet will in the end ride in behind the Prime Minister and we could, and I say could, uh, be looking at some sort of agreement in Cabinet 
over the next 24 to 48 hours. And the government um, has also been uh, commenting in the House of Commons earlier on today, haven't they? What was that about, Beth? Yeah, so there's been some other movement today on another matter, and this is about the legal text on the Irish backstop. The issue about this is, as you know, on the Irish backstop, this is to protect the soft border in Ireland in the event of a no-deal Brexit. So how do you keep that border open when the Republic of Ireland remains in the EU and Northern Ireland with the UK is outside of the UK, UK, uh, the uh, EU with a no deal Brexit by its very nature that's a hard trade border so they need some sort of resolution to that some sort of legal text to guarantee to the peoples of Ireland on both sides of that border that it will remain soft. There's lots of nervousness uh, amongst the likes of the Democratic Unionist Party that Theresa May is going to sell them out, that she's going to allow somehow uh, Northern Ireland to be cleaved off and put into a basket uh, with the Republic of Ireland and that is uh, intolerable to them. So what's happening in the Commons is those who are nervous and untrustful of Theresa May and her plan want to see legal advice. The legal advice from the Attorney General on what this withdrawal agreement looks like and what the Irish backstop language looks like. Um, but what's happened in the past hour is that the government have appeared to concede Labour tabled a motion saying that the advice must be published. Uh, the Democratic Unionist Party said they would vote with Labour and then a load of Brexiteers uh, MPs on the Conservative bench said they would abstain. The government was heading for an effective defeat, pretty difficult situation. And this is how they've tried to pick up the ball. Have a listen to what David Liddington, the Cabinet Secretary, said in the Commons a few moments ago. We will um, make available to all members of the House, following the conclusion of negotiations and ahead of the meaningful vote, a full reasoned position statement laying out the government's both political and also legal position on the proposed withdrawal agreement. My right honourable and learned friend, the Attorney General, has authorised me to confirm to the House this afternoon that he is ready to assist further by making an oral statement to the House. So essentially what David Linton is saying is that the government will publish some sort of legal advice. The Attorney General will come to the House of Commons to answer questions on the Irish backstop and the legality around that. Pretty unprecedented, I'd say. And in terms of the end game, what's the big picture here? Well, it feels very much like Theresa May is losing control of Parliament. And now they're beginning to instruct her what to do, not the other way around. OK, Beth, for now, thank you. Get an update on Sky News' campaign for an independent commission for leaders' debates at general elections. The number of people who have signed it has now gone through the 60,000 barrier. When it reaches 100,000, Parliament will have to consider the matter for debates. To help get there, you can take part if you would like to. Uh, go to skynews.com slash make debates happen. The number of people now known to have died in California's wildfires has risen to 44, making them the deadliest in the state's history. It's feared the number could rise further still, with hundreds of people still missing four days after the fires began in both the north and south of the state. Nearly a dozen fires still active, with more than 8,000 fire crews deployed to control the flames. In the south, at least two people have been killed in the so-called Woolsey fire covering the cities of Thousand Oaks. You'll know Thousand Oaks, of course, they had the uh, gunman in the bar there claiming 12 lives and then the fire just a couple of days later. And also down towards uh, Malibu, lots of stars there who had to flee their homes and many of them making their way to the beaches. In the north, the campfire north of Sacramento, there we are, uh, which uh, surrounds the city of Paradise, still burning. Just a quarter of the fires contained. 42 people have lost their lives so far. From there, our chief correspondent, Stuart Ramsey, reports. The road to the town of Paradise is testament to the sheer ferocity of the fires that have raged in Northern California for days. An entire valley destroyed. It's now a blackened, smoking, chaotic mess of trees and vegetation. People drove past this while flames shot hundreds of feet into the air. There is an eerie yellow light. The sun, in the middle of the day, barely breaks through. 
The first real indicator of just how catastrophic the firestorm was are the abandoned cars on the side of the road. People were escaping in these, and some of them didn't make it. But even this didn't prepare us for the scenes inside paradise. What happened here is quite incredible. This isn't just reminiscent of a war zone, it's exactly the same. A shopping complex, utterly destroyed. Absolutely nothing survived, and this was a big building. It's simply gone. And it's the same everywhere you look. This is not a forest, it's a housing estate. And it too has gone. Mile after mile of total destruction. The heat and the speed of the fire was lethal and quite astonishingly powerful. It took everyone by surprise. There's a lot of mass casualties. It's sad. It's very sad. The emergency services are struggling here. They've never seen anything quite like it, and they found themselves almost helpless to save thousands of people fleeing for their lives. We're trying to get people out of here, and we're stuck. There's nothing. We're at gridlock, and cars ain't moving, and I just, it's the worst feeling ever. These people aren't getting out, and they're not, traffic's not moving. It was, it's hard. It's okay. very devastating. I'm sure, I'm sure. People certainly died in the chaos of the escape from paradise, but it's clear some didn't get that far. Bodies have been found in homes. Police tape warns nobody to cross. Whoever stayed in this house didn't stand a chance. <laughs>